Jeremiah chapter 43, verse 1 is where we begin. This is our 23rd study through the book of Jeremiah, and we ask, Lord God, that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it happened when Jeremiah had stopped speaking to all the people all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them. All these words. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> all the words here in verse 1 refer to the previous chapter. And it says in verse 2 that Azariah, the son of Hoshaiah, Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the proud men spoke, saying to Jeremiah, You speak falsely. The Lord our God has not sent you to say, Do not go to Egypt to dwell there. In other words, what these rebels are saying is that since we don't want to stay in Israel, it just can't possibly be God's will for us to stay here. They were confusing their own feelings with the leading of the Holy Spirit, which is something that happens an awful lot today. Uh, it is a red flag when somebody says, I sense in my spirit. You know, why don't they just, you know, that is such a pious way of saying, I sense in my spirit is a pious way of saying, this is what I want, or this is what I think I should do. Why not just leave it at that? Why drag God into your thoughts when there's absolutely no proof whatsoever that you can give that that is coming from the Holy Spirit? All it, all it is, I think, most of the time is an attempt to give credibility and God's stamp of approval to what we ourselves want to do. I sense in my spirit. Well, these guys are saying, I sense in my spirit that you are wrong, Jeremiah. It's the same old, same old uh, thing that, that people go by today. If it feels right, it must be right. Well, not necessarily. Three. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, has set you against us to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they may put us to death or carry us away captive to Babylon. So Johanan the son of Kira, Korea, all the captains of the forces and all the people would not obey the voice of the Lord to remain in the land of Judah. Disbelief makes disobedience easier. They say, Jeremiah, you're lying. You have twisted the word of God. So really, you see, it's our duty to disobey you. Verse 5, But Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah, who had returned to dwell in the land of Judah, from all nations where they had been driven, men, women, children, the king's daughters, and every person whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch the son of Neriah. So they went to the land of Egypt, for they did not obey the voice of the Lord, and they went as far as Taphanes. And the all would include Jeremiah and his assistant, Baruch. So <clears throat> all these people are forced to go down to Egypt with these rebels. Verse 8, Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah in Tophanes, saying, Take large stones in your hand, and hide them in the sight of the men of Judah, in the clay in the brick courtyard, which is at the entrance to Pharaoh's house in Tophanes, and say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send 
and bring Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne above these stones that I have hidden. And he will spread his royal pavilion over them. When he comes, he shall strike the land of Egypt and deliver to death those appointed for death and to captivity those appointed for captivity and to the sword those appointed for the sword. I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt and he shall burn them and carry them away captive and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt as a shepherd puts on his garment and he shall go out from there in peace. He shall also break the sacred pillars of Beth Shemesh that are in the land of Egypt and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians he shall burn with fire. And so we see that these rebels can run from God's will but they cannot run from God. They ran from God's will when they went down to Egypt but he is with them in Egypt, and God pronounces judgment upon them there. Now let's go into chapter 44. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews who dwell in the land of Egypt, who dwell at Migdal, at Tophanes, at Noph, and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. You have seen all the calamity that I have brought on Jerusalem and on all the cities of Judah, and behold, this day they are a desolation, and no one dwells in them because of their wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods whom they did not know, they, nor you, nor your fathers. However, I have sent to you all my servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, O oh, do not do this abominable thing that I hate. But they did not listen, or incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense to other gods. So my fury and my anger were poured out and kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as it is this day. Now therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, Why do you commit this great evil against yourselves? To cut off from you man and woman, child, an infant out of Judah, leaving none to remain, in that you provoke me to wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense to other gods in the land of Egypt where you have gone to dwell, that you may cut yourselves off and be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers, the wickedness of the kings of Judah, the wickedness of their wives, your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives which they committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. They have not been humbled to this day, nor have they feared. They have not walked in my law or in my statutes that I have set before you and your fathers. Therefore, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for catastrophe and for cutting off all Judah. And I will take the remnant of Judah who have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to dwell there, and they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall be consumed by the sword and by famine. They shall die from the least to the greatest, by the sword and by famine. And they shall be 
They shall be an oath, an astonishment, a curse, and a reproach. For I will punish those who dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have punished Jerusalem, by the sword, by famine, by pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah who have gone into the land of Egypt to dwell there shall escape or survive, lest they return to the land of Judah to which they desire to return and dwell. For none shall return except those who escape. Lesson if you love yourself and you hate pain and disappointed disappointment, then do not sin. God reminds the disobedient Jews here who ran off to Egypt that the reason their own country was destroyed was because they disobeyed God. And now they too have disobeyed God by going down to Egypt. They are asking for trouble. And that is what they are going to get, and they shall not escape. 15. Then all the men who knew that their wives had burned incense to other gods, with all the women who stood by, a great multitude, and all the people who dwelt in the land of Egypt in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that you have spoken to us, in the name of the Lord. We will not listen to you. Now, that is despising the word of God. That is despising God. That is a sinful stubbornness. We will not listen to you. But we will certainly do whatever has gone out of our own mouth to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offerings to her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of food, were well off, and saw no trouble. But since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have lacked everything and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. The women also said, And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make cakes for her to worship her, and pour out drink offerings to her without our husband's permission? These rebels are saying, We're going to do what God says is wrong. So there, what do you think of that? They say, we're going to honor the Queen of Heaven. We're going to worship her. We don't care what God says. That's what we're going to do. Sin has hardened their souls to the point where the punishment that they are suffering right now doesn't even faze them. Certainly doesn't even suggest to them that it might be a good idea that they repent. Verse 20, Then Jeremiah spoke to all the people, the men, the women, and all the people who had given him that answer, saying, The incense that you burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them? And did it not come into his mind? So the Lord could no longer bear it because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which you committed. Therefore your land is a desolation, an astonishment, a curse, and without an inhabitant as it is this day, because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord or walked in His law, in His statutes, or in his testimonies. Therefore, this calamity has happened to you as at this day. Moreover, Jeremiah said to all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah, you who are in the land of Egypt. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, You and your wives have spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, we will surely keep our vows that we have made 
to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offerings to her. You will surely keep your vows and perform your vows. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, all Judah who dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God lives. Behold, I will watch over them for adversity, and not for good. And all the men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by famine until there is an end to them. Yet a small number who escape the sword shall return from the land of Egypt to the land of Judah, and all the remnant of Judah who have gone to the land of Egypt to dwell there shall know whose words will stand, mine or theirs. And this shall be a sign to you, says the Lord, that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my words will surely stand against you for adversity. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hafra, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies and into the hand of those who seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, his enemy, who sought his life. And it boils down to this. The Israelites will not repent. They are determined to willfully rebel against God. Therefore, God is determined to punish them. Those who have been promising them safety in spite of their persistent rebellion will be exposed as the liars that they really are. And God will be glorified because His word will come to pass as it always does. We'll pick it up in chapter 45 next time. Until then, so long everyone.